All right, here we go. Now it's time for our reviews this week. First up, guys, we're still playing catch up. We got to get to some stuff we played before while we were on break. So we'll try to keep this quick, but let's go. First up, we've got Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. So actually, this one surprised me. This one was really good. I had considered getting a Vita to play this when, uh, when it first came out, but I never did. And then when they announced the HD version for consoles and PC, I was like, all right, nice, now I can play it. So I played this on PC, and the graphics look great. It doesn't look much like a mobile game at all. Everything is sharp, plays smooth. I'll get to it a little bit more in gameplay, but you can tell, you can definitely tell it was originally a mobile game because the environments are a lot smaller than the other Assassin's Creed games. So sound, sound is standard fare. You know, voice acting is good. Usual quality from the Assassin's Creed games. The music here actually, though, did stand out. I'm pretty sure they won some awards for it. And the, the music, the track I liked the most was the theme song that plays when you're, in the, uh, when you're in the HQ. So that was really, really good. Let's move on to the gameplay. So the assassin in this game, Avalyn, she's got pretty much the same weapons as the other assassins, but she's also got a blowgun. So she can take enemies out with poison darts, and she's got another type of darts called berserk darts, which make the enemies attack each other, so that can cause some interesting situations. And really the only other difference is that she doesn't have a block move, which I found was kind of strange. It, it can screw you up a lot during the combat, so you can, you can only counter, so you really got to time your, your blocks and, uh, or, yeah, your counters and your attacks, otherwise you're just going to take damage and get annihilated. So another thing I noticed in the gameplay, you can pretty much jump and climb on anything in the game. Like, if you want to go straight up a building, you can start from anywhere and just go up. And I, I, if I remember Whoa. correctly... Yeah, in the other games, you have to like you have to be right below the window ledge, or you have to be like right on something that the assassin or your character can actually grab. In this one, it feels like they just place things like where you can just go. Like if you want to if you want to start scaling a building, you just go straight up. It doesn't matter where you are on it. So that was actually pretty cool. It was you know it, it could be maybe that's just how they designed the objects in the environment. But I was always able to move wherever I wanted to really really easily. So overall, in terms of gameplay, they haven't deviated much from the Assassin's Creed formula here. There's no separate Animus parts or other characters like the other games. But this game is supposed to be an Abstergo product, so it's just all Aveline all the time. You can tell it was originally a mobile game because the missions are definitely shorter. But that doesn't take anything away from it at all. It's still Assassin's Creed. So if I'm going to complain here a little bit, the only issue I had is this. I feel Avalon's character could have been fleshed out a little bit more. So you can go and read the database entries, but it just felt like something was missing with her character background. So I, I don't know, it was just kind of weird. Like, you'd go from mission to mission, and it just felt like stuff was missing. So yeah, here, th this, is a, this is a good point, too. So this is, uh, in this game, there's a, there's a mission where you actually meet Connor from Assassin's Creed 3, and I thought it was really cool they worked this in here. It's only one mission, so it's, it's not that long, but if you played Assassin's Creed 3, you know who he is, and you get to team up with him and go through a, go through a side mission here. So that was really cool. Um, in terms of story, the story was really good. It's typical Assassin's Creed fair with a betrayal from one of the characters at the end. There's the usual amount of side stuff to do. There's a trading mini game like some of the other games have, but it's, it's just more to earn money, and it's, it's not really... Um, you know, it's not anything substantial. It's just you move your ships around and you buy goods and stuff. And it, compared to the trading system in Assassin's Creed 3, it's like a dumbed-down version of it. So not too much there, but it was still, it was still done pretty well. So I want to say overall, this, this game, this one was great. And again, like I said, you can tell it was designed as a mobile game because the scale is a little bit smaller. But I actually liked that because it meant that I wasn't spending 20 or 30 hours just to get through the entire story of the game. So let's put up the score here. See what we got. Must play. If you're a fan of Assassin's Creed, definitely check this one out. This is one of the better ones. I, I wasn't I wasn't really sure this one would be any good, but actually th this one was awesome. So must play. Definitely play this one if you like Assassin's Creed. And there you go, guys. That's Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation.